you're welcome to my channel in this video we shall be talking about receivables management or data management and working capital the term receivables is defined as debt owed to the business by customers arising from sales of goods or services in ordinary course of business when you sell goods or services on credit you create what we call receivables or debts yeah you get debtors out of selling goods on credit receivables are also one of the major important parts of current assets of the business concern it arises due to credit sales to customers hence it's also known as accounts receivables or bills receivables there are four management of receivables is defined as the process of making decisions resulting to the investment of funds in these assets which will result into maximizing the overall return on the investment of the firm once you decide to invest in accounts receivables your sales are likely to increase because you it acts as a marketing tool it will help you to attract customers let's look at the objectives of receivables management why do businesses invest in receivables why do businesses sell goods or services on credit first is to promote sales once you sell goods on credit it will attract customers to come and buy from you because they are sure that even though they do not have cash with them they can be able to get the goods or services and they will be able to pay later so the first aim is to promote sales and to increase profits for the business. Another objective is to fight competition. Once you start selling goods or services on credit, you'll be able to outcompete other businesses that do not want to sell their goods or services on credit. Then to retain existing clients and attract new ones, selling goods on credit attracts new customers and it will help you to retain the existing customers then it acts as a marketing tool you'll be able to push weak products into the market selling goods on credit is good for the business though it comes with some costs and below are some of the costs that come with extension of credit or debt to customers first is collection costs this is the cost incurred in collecting the receivables from customers to whom credit sales have been made. You have to incur costs when you're collecting that money from the customers since some, some, some customers do not want to pay before you remind them. So you'll have to incur some costs when you're collecting money from them. Then capital cost. This is the cost on the use of additional capital to support credit sales which alternatively could have been employed somewhere else. Like when you're selling on credit, you'll have to get more capital since customers will delay to pay you. So you, you must be having more capital to, to support your business. Another cost we have is administrative cost. You have to pay the staff for maintaining accounting records re relating to the data of the business. So it's also another cost that comes with giving goods or sales on credit. We have another cost, default cost. Default costs are the overdues that cannot be recovered. An example is bad debts because it's not that everyone that you give on credit will be able to pay you. Now let's look at the factors that determine the receivable size of the business. Why is it that some businesses have less data compared to other businesses and the first one is the sales level sales level is one of the important factors which determines the size of receivables of a firm if the if the business wants to increase on its sales it has to over give on credit but if a business just wants to maintain its sales it will have to give less on credit then we have credit policy. Credit policy is the determination of credit standards and analysis. The criteria that you follow before extending credit to customers. 
if if your credit policy is liberal it it will lead to increase in sales volume and it will also lead to increase in the size of receivables but when it's stringent or strict it will reduce the size of receivables because it will reduce on the number of customers that you give on credit another factor is credit terms credit terms specify the repayment terms and depending on the credit terms the size of receivables can either increase or decrease if there are many terms on on repayment a few customers will take goods or services on credit but if there are few terms many customers will take products or services on credit and under credit terms we have two things and that is credit period and then cash discount credit period it's the time for which the trade credit is extended to customers in case of credit sales and it's normally expressed in terms of net days he give a firm a firm's credit terms are net 15 it means that the customers are expected to pay within 15 days from the date of sale so cre credit period is that time that is given to customers in order for them to pay back another credit term we have is cash discount cash discount is the incentive given to customers to make early payment before the due date if you offer a cash discount to customers it will increase on the size of the receivables of the business because many customers will take on credit because you've given them a cash discount but when there is no cash discount you're likely to have low levels of credit sales then another factor is management of receivables management of receivables is also one of the factors which affect the size of the receivables in the firm when management involves systematic approaches to the receivables the firm can reduce on the size of, re of receivables but when there are no systematic approaches to receivables it will increase on the level of receivables of the firm now let's look at the optimum size of receivables optimum investment in receivables is the level where there is a trade-off between costs and profitability of receivables you you you, you balance between the costs and the profitability what do you gain when you give customers on credit and what do you lose when you give customers on credit a liberal credit policy enhances profitability of the firm on the account of high sales if you over give on credit you're likely to increase your sales but it comes with costs such as more investment more risk of bad debts and higher costs of administration of receivables and a problem of liquidity is created you're likely not to have enough cash in your business but contrary a stringent credit policy declines the profitability of the business if you if you're so strict when giving customers on credit you're likely to reduce on the profitability of the business because it will reduce on your sales but at, at, at the same time that the business will have enough cash to cater for other things it will enhance liquidity of the firm therefore the optimum the optimum says of receivables is the best you have to balance between the costs and the profitability the optimum credit policy arises at a point where there is a trade-off between liquidity and profitability you balance between the two let's look at the credit management policy a firm is required to establish the policies of managing receivables after considering both the benefits and the costs of different policies yeah and these policies relate to under credit management policy we have credit standards credit standards is the best criteria for extension of credit to customers it's like the minimum quality of credit worthiness for a credit applicant that is acceptable to the firm you say if the if a customer has these qualities we can be able to give him or her goods or services on credit yeah, and under credit standards we have the faces that we follow 
the first C and the credit standard is character. Character is very important, but it's difficult to measure. The firm has to determine whether the customer will be able to pay. And this can be judged by the first impression of the customer, background checkup, and other things by asking friends around. Another C we have under credit standard is capacity. Capacity is the ability of someone to pay. Ability, some, some, someone might have the character that they are willing to pay back the money, but they can be that they are not able to pay the money. So we also look at the capacity of someone to pay. We look at the assets owned by, the, by that person, the investments. It can be based on historical performance of the firm. Has the firm been performing well? Are they able to pay back in case we give them products or services on credit like that? Another C is Coratel. Coratel is like the security that you give to the person or the firm that is giving you on credit. So the firm that is giving on credit has to first look at the marketability of the of that security just in case you do not pay yeah can they be able to sell it and get back their money another c we have is capital it looks at how much skin do you have in the business it it represents your investment compared to what debt you're asking for you may be having a business worth two million but when you're asking for a debt of four million they really do not match. If you cannot invest that much in your business, why do you want someone else to give you that money? So they, they, they have to first look at the capital that you invested in in your business in order for them to give you a debt. And the last C is condition. Condition looks at what else might happen. And these include uncontrollable events like law, the economy. Yeah, maybe like now we are in a pandemic. No one can give you things on credit because we are all uncertain of the future. Another credit management policy we have is credit terms. And credit terms refers to the terms under which a firm sells goods on credit. And we have two components of credit terms and that is credit period and cash discount. Credit period which refers to the total length of time over which credit is extended to a customer. To pay a bill and then cash discount it refers to the incentive that is given to a customer so that they can be able to make early payments before the due date another credit management policy is collection procedures collection procedures looks at the steps that a firm goes through in order for them to collect money from debtors and it includes things such as writing letters, making phone calls, personal visits, and sometimes legal action. A stringent collection procedure is expensive for the firm on account of high, high costs and loss of goodwill. When the firm over demands its customers, it can lose goodwill among its customers, but it also minimizes loss of, loss of money all in the names of bad debts and it enhances savings in terms of lower costs of capital because of re reduction in the size of receivables so the collection policy of the firm should strike a balance between the costs and benefits of different collection periods because they all have benefits and and costs therefore it should strike a balance Let's look at the procedures to collect dues or money from slow paying customers. And the first one is reminders. This should be a step by step process that involves one is sending credit notes to inform the debtors of the accounts due. First, send them credit notes they, they might have forgotten. Then the, the second step is send a polite letter in case the credit notes do not remind them enough. Send a polite letter to remind the customers of the amount due. And if a, a, a polite letter doesn't work, you send a strong, 
a stronger letter to remind the customer and if a stronger letter also doesn't work you make a personal visit or you make personal contacts either on phone or actual visits and if all of those things do, do not work you resort to legal action however it should be a last resort as it may include higher costs and loss of goodwill among the customers another pr procedure collecting money from slow paying customers is insuring data insuring data you take out an insurance policy on your data since the assets to the firm then factoring of data you sell data to a factoring company then if all those steps do not work you do a final rate off you forget about them you forget that they will never pay yeah you forget about them and move on let's look at the credit evaluation of a customer the steps that are involved in credit evaluation of a customer and the five stages the first one is gathering of credit information of the customer through financial statements of the firm bank references references from trade and chamber of commerce yeah and other sources you first gather credit information about the customer has this customer been paying is he or she good at paying like that is this firm good at paying yeah then the second step is credit analysis after gathering the above information about the customer the credit worthiness of the applicant is to be analyzed by using the faces the character the capacity the coratel the capital and then the condition and the third step is credit decision after credit analysis the next step is the decision to extend credit facility to a potential customer if the analysis of the applicant is not up to the standard he may be offered cash on delivery instead of you rejecting yeah and if if the standards of the customer do, do not match with the with the required standards then you give them cash on delivery yeah instead of giving them credit sales then the fourth step is credit limit if you've decided to extend a credit facility to a potential customer a limit may be prescribed by the financial manager let's say when we are giving goods or services on on credit we would we, we do not exceed goods of 1 million the limit is 1 million de depending upon the credit analysis and the credit worthiness of the customer and lastly is collection procedure a suitable and clear out collection procedure is established by the firm when extending the credit to the customer yeah and cash discount may also be offered for early payments of dues and this facilitates faster recovery that was all about receivables management and our working capital thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe like comment share with your friends and watch my next video we shall be talking about inventory management the last component in working capital